Welcome everyone to this episode of Consciousness Unleashed with Bonnie Serratori, and I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Serratori is a master tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. And today's episode, we'll be talking about gratitude because Thanksgiving is about a week away from today when we're recording. And it's just a really um, beautiful topic to discuss during this time during the holidays. So Bonnie, how are you today? I'm good. Looking forward to our time. All right. Yeah, I'm grateful for uh, my time with you during these podcasts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, I have a couple of questions that I'm going to start with about gratitude. And this actually came from the group clearings that you have. You have, from what I know, two group clearings uh, in the shop at spiritualacceleration.com. Uh, where you, anybody, if you're listening, you could go to spiritualacceleration.com and find any of the things we're talking about there uh, to purchase. Um, so you have two on gratitude in the shop. And I watched them and I did them. They were very powerful. Um, And in both uh, group clearings, you did talk about the importance of having an open heart. Mm. And so I have two questions from this. Um, What does it really mean to have an open heart? And what is the connection between that and the state of gratitude? Mm -hmm. Okay. Open heart. This is huge. So some people can actually feel blockages in the heart. We can feel um, tangible sensations, energy frequencies, where our heart isn't open. Now, remember, the heart does start to close and we start creating protection really early in our life. It can begin when we're in the womb. Um, Definitely, as we're like little toddlers and growing up in life, we begin to discover that our curiosity, our, you know, the, the place where we are exploring all of that as a young toddler, you know, we're going to get in trouble because remember, we want to put things in our mouths, touch things, and some things aren't good to be doing that with. But basically what happens is, is we begin to learn that who I am, what my needs are, what I want, what I'm curious about, who I am, there's something wrong with that. I'm not loved. I'm not you know, wanted or on some level, we've got all these beliefs based on our misperceptions of being in the womb or being a young child. And when we begin to believe that my needs, who I am, my curiosity, my desire to explore, my creativity, all of that begins to get hidden because I learn that I'm going to get in trouble. Trouble means maybe feeling unloved, which that eventually equates to that. And we don't want to risk anything that would in any way jeopardize love because that's survival. So as we were growing up along the way, we experience life. We might get our feelings hurt. We might feel rejected in some way. We might get humiliated or punished. And that always happens to everyone somewhere, somehow in your life. All of those experiences cause us to contract to pull back. When we pull back, when we contract, we begin to create energy blockages. I've witnessed thousands of people with barriers, uh, bricks, walls, fences, padlocks, you know, across the heart chakra. That shows me that the heart is not open. The thing about the heart not being open is that's also how we receive. We receive with an open heart. So how many people, when you get a compliment and maybe someone says something, oh, great job. You did it. You, what you wrote was awesome. Or, oh, look at your, your hair. Your hair looks beautiful or whatever compliment that might be. What happens in your body? Are you like, whoa, yeah, thank you very much. Or are you like, uh-huh, yeah, right. No, I, I, well, I, want, yeah, I didn't do anything and I didn't really, you know, whatever. Okay. So there's a deflecting. That's a great indicator. Your heart is blocked protection, got walls up, got some kind of shield, got something up that doesn't allow for the true authentic light to shine forth. Now, remember, when we don't have all the wounding, when we're not blocking, we are still living in an open heart, which is who we are in the very core, which is pure frequency of love and light. When we are in that, when we are living in from that place of our core true, uh, actually who we really are, our heart is open. We are 
naturally, organically just being ourselves. We don't worry about, you know, uh, making sure we filter what we're saying or, you know, don't share our thoughts or whatever, but we're, we're basically open and we are just being us, which is really cool. Then we're in a state of gratitude. Then we're also in a state of being able to receive. Okay. But when that's not happening, when that heart is protected on any level in any way from any hurt that we've ever had, any beliefs, misperceptions, conclusions that we drew about our experiences, we protect the heart. When the heart's protected again, we don't really have true gratitude. We really don't have the ability to fully receive on all levels. That means to receive love. It means to receive abundance, you know, wealth, all things, good health. Everything is all determined by our, our, our wide open heart or protected heart. So the heart is major in our ability to be in the world, to, to live in the world in a way that we are fully here, fully present and experiencing everything fully. And the, and the fullness of our heart being open means to truly receive the abundance of life. So not having an open heart uh, affects every facet of our lives. So I hear a lot of people talk about how we should just um, practice being grateful and doing daily practices like a gratitude journal, maybe write, a, write three things you're grateful for every day. And slowly over time, if you practice that vibration, you'll just uh, naturally kind of vibe at a higher, higher level. And I see it like both ways where it's, it's really like a byproduct. Gratitude is a byproduct of of being clear of your wounding. And then right. once, once you're able to kind of be in that more genuinely, then it may perhaps then if you're staying in that state, it could, it could help to release more negative uh, vibrations. Is that correct? In a sense. So, you know, it reminds me of people doing mantras and positive affirmations and way back. This is, I remember doing that kind of thing back in the eighties, nineties, somewhere in there. And they didn't really work. Okay. And let's come back though, to what you're saying. Like if we intentionally practice every day, like get up in the morning, first thing, just knowing that in the core of who I am or who we are is that beautiful, pure love and light. What we're all wanting is to get back into that. We all know we got wounding, we got misperceptions. We have this debris in front of that beautiful light. And it's more than just writing affirmations or writing, you know, what you're grateful for. It would really be about the intention, having intention of connecting with the true feeling of gratitude, with the true feeling of that pure love and light in the core. When we have that intention and we're practicing and writing coming from that uh, state of awareness it changes things a little bit more than opposed to I'm grateful for the sun rising this morning. I'm grateful for, you know, connecting with my friends or whatever that is. Okay. So you can feel, even as I'm saying that you can feel, I'm not really connected in here. Okay. Now, if I want to say, Oh, I am. So what I would do is, Oh, the sun, the sun, I love the sun being out. It's a sunny day. That makes me feel happy. I love, and I have gratitude that the sun is out today. So I'm actually feeling more of a sense, a true sense of gratitude, as opposed to just writing the words or just, you know, mouthing the words or, you know, just speaking them. There's an intentional desire to connect with a feeling of that gratitude. So no matter what it is we're writing, let's just say it's about friends. I'm grateful for my friends. Okay. I've got friends in different parts of the country and in the States and out of country, and they're awesome people. I love being with them. So I can speak the words and not have a connection, or I can literally come into my own self, think about my friends that I truly love and care about. And then I would come from that place of writing my things, right? Yes, I have, I have great gratitude for the friends in my life, but I would hold that and let that feeling come forth of really, truly loving that, truly having the gratitude. So again, it's really about taking it to the next level where you're actually feeling those kinds of emotions as you're writing down what you're grateful for. And even if you're not writing things down and you do want to just practice the gratitude, again, you don't just say the words. You know, people will say that thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to say this 20 times. If I say it 50 times, okay, 
It doesn't work that way. Okay, you can say it a million times and nothing will change, but you can say it five times and feel a heart opening even more because you are connecting with the feeling of true gratitude. And for a lot of people, um, they can't find that place of gratitude. It's an emotional sensation. So what I would encourage people to do is find someone or even a critter or whatever you have in your world that you can feel some kind of love for. Might even be a bird. I mean, it might might be iguana. I mean, my, <laughs> I say that because my my sister, one of my my sister, has had an had an iguana. So it doesn't matter what it is. Find something. Maybe you have a dog. Maybe you have a cat. Maybe you have a friend. Maybe you have a spouse. Maybe you, your children. It doesn't matter. Somewhere. Maybe it's even an object. Maybe you have jewelry or your cell phone or a mug or whatever that you really, really, really like, okay? Use that to help yourself activate and feel those deeper emotional sensations. Because when you do, your gratitude energy frequency will be stronger and deeper and real and true so that when you are doing the gratitude, you're feeling it. And what's happening is, is you are starting to live more in the frequency of that love and light rather than all the negativity that we live in daily, finding fault, judging, making wrong, punishing, victimization, all of that. So we have the ability to begin to open, but we have to be authentically real and connecting with the true sensation. So that's, that's the difference. That's what's up. So it would really actually have a genuine effect on the subconscious and clearing things if you're genuinely feeling gratitude, yes. right? Oh, right. yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. So could you maybe get into a little bit more of um, how does it actually change your outer reality when you're able to uh, be more in a state of gratitude more and more? Like, do you say, think it, uh, would you say it brings in and attracts maybe better relationships, better health, more money and all that? Like. Out, outwardly, how does that look? Right. Okay. So I'm just going to share both. So, so people who don't have the gratitude, who, you know, so seemingly their lives are, there's always some kind of distress. There's always some kind of trauma, drama, something's always going on. Okay. So most people live in that reality. Therefore, for them, it's challenging to find any gratitude. And yet what's happening is we also have neural pathways in the brain. And when we are in a constant state of negativity simply because we've grown up with things happening to us, okay? Seemingly happening. We forget, or well, actually not, we can forget, you don't know that we create a reality 100%. If everyone knew that, they would be taking, making effort to change their attitude and their thoughts, okay? And what happens though is our lives, we have trauma drama, you know, things happen, can't pay the rent or can't have enough food or lost the job or my car broke down or, you know, the, you know my horse, horse just broke a leg or whatever, okay? Anything and everything. That's because we are echoing out the negative frequency. So when we don't have that light gratitude, lightness within, we will continue to get more and more and more of what we already got, what we already live. It will never end until we change what's within in the subconscious. So what actually happens is, is even the practice of, let's just say, yeah, yeah, your heart, your life is messed up. You, you know, there's always trauma, drama. There's always something that something's falling apart, whatever. Yeah, that's all true. And if you start practicing the gratitude with authentic feeling, we begin to connect more with that true divine light. And what begins to happen is the things of trauma drama start to subside. Life starts to smooth out. It doesn't mean that there still won't be everything that happens in life. It's just that you're no longer echoing out with those those frequencies drawing to you the negativity. You are now echoing out the frequency of gratitude, the frequency of love, the frequency of love and light. When we're doing that and we're living that, everything that's coming to us is going to be more of that higher level frequency. Remember, we are the ones creating our reality. We do have the ability to shift and change, and we have to have that desire to do so. And as we do, as we unravel more and more, we begin to discover that 
oh, the negative thoughts are dissipating. Oh, the, the judging others is dissipating. Oh, the attachment to so many things is dissipating. You know, all these things that were so important and so real, my belief systems, whoa, those are dissipating. Hmm. So everything begins to change and we become more authentically love and light. So here's the thing about love and light. There is no good or bad in love and light. There is no good and bad and or bad in love and light. There is no judgments in love and light. There is no fault finding. There is no victim in love and light. It can't exist. So ultimately, if we want our lives to have more peace, more joy, more happiness, more abundance, more love on all levels, we might want to think about facing what's blocking all of that from happening because it's all about us. It's carry over from past lives in our soul imprint where we reenacting scenarios that reinforce our beliefs. And what we want now is to wake up to, oh, our soul levels, our higher levels are bringing these opportunities to us so that we can unravel and heal and live a more full life. Be here sharing the gift of ourselves, sharing that gift of of our own divine light, love and light. And as we come in, our whole world changes, everything changes. We're happier, we're more joyful, we're more at peace. We're not as disturbed, you know, we're not traumatized by the, the things that are happening in the world. Like, you know, when, right now we got people starving to death. We have natural disasters, it's not gonna get any better yet. We got a ways to go. This is all part of that, um, you know, the, the new paradigm happening. And when we're when our heart is open, yes, we, we, we can see and sense, oh, yes, there's great suffering. And it's not that we're now feeling that pain of that suffering because we've cleaned up our own. It's just that we're witnessing the suffering of humanity on a large scale. And we still move forward in our lives. We still feel joy, happy, peace. We're still feeling much more abundant. We're not whipped around by what's happening externally. And it doesn't mean we don't care. It just means that we're no longer getting activated with our own wounding, our own hurts and heartaches that have been within us for lifetimes. So all of that gets, as we're clearing that stuff up, we no longer are seeing the world as a bad place or a negative place. You know, it's more like this, this is part of the divine plan unfolding. And yes, there is going to be massive die off. That's just part of that un unraveling. The new paradigm is bringing and exposing all the darkness. So this is the journey of what it looks like. But for us personally, we can be like in the eye of the tornado, swirling around, everything just chaos, and we're in the middle and we're at peace. That is actually possible. That is what we want to experience because that is who we are. You know, Bonnie, I noticed that in my journey of healing myself and my own issues is uh, the more clear I get, uh, I noticed that I end up being grateful for even things I, wa I wasn't, I, uh, things that I hated before or found challenging before. And now I feel like I'm clear enough at this point where I could look at the potential challenges in the future. And a part of me is actually looking forward to it, even though that it's going to be very difficult, obviously, with so many things that are crazy things that are happening in the world right now. Um, and even a year ago, I would feel a lot more anxiety, a lot more mm -hmm. stress and fear. And my mind would just race about all these different things that could potentially happen. But I'm much mm -hmm. more present now because in part, a huge part because of your work and what you've your your amazing work with the spiritual acceleration. I've been able to clear so much that I'm kind of looking forward to the challenges, which I never thought I would be able to be in that state. Mm. It's sort of right. It's kind of weird to me that I'm actually uh, um, excited. I don't. I don't even feel like that's right. I shouldn't. I part of me feels like I shouldn't feel that way, but I kind of am grateful for being in this time in the world right now, even though it's mm -hmm. challenging. Because I'm finding out so much more about me, and I'm learning to mm -hmm. be grateful for more for myself. And when when I make those transitions, and I and I clear more and more. So Bonnie. Um, just, I guess, in a way to end uh, today's episode on gratitude, we did touch upon a lot of things. So do, is there anything else you want to share about, uh, about being grateful and, and what that, 
what that really means and, and how important it is for us to uh, find ourselves in that elevated, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. consciousness. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important for people to understand that when we hold negativity, you know, finding fault, feeling like we're victimized, there's an actual darker energy that we are experiencing. It's like for real, okay? It's like a, a darkness. And when the neural pathways start getting activated into the negativity rather than the positive, then more and more of our world will be negative. We will, because what happens is, is the emotion that we hold is what's echoing out. So if I'm always in a negative state, then I'm always echoing out negativity. And of course, that's what I will always get. So the desire, the true uh, purpose for us to be here really is to share the gift of who we are. That means sharing the authentic me, the authentic Cynthia, without your wounding, without misperceptions and beliefs, the true authentic you shining your light. When that happens, we are actually stepping into the frequency of pure love and light. And the, the beauty of that is we will be drawn to certain things. Like people say, well, what is my purpose? Okay. Well, the purpose is shine your light, but we begin to expand in a way that life changes and we are creating consciously creating our world the gratitude component always keeps us in a more positive state when we wake up in the morning and we we wake up with the intention of connecting with the gratitude we are literally setting our day meaning rather than all those negative neural pathways getting activated we are now activating the positive neural pathways intentionally and as we're doing that, we can feel as we're feeling that that pure frequency of love and light, that good feeling of holding love, that's that that's like the foundation of our day. And now it doesn't mean that life won't do what it does because we haven't cleared everything. But what happens is, is when that become, becomes our foundation, rather than the negative, like, okay, now what's going to happen? Now what? Now what, you know, now what kind of problems or what kind of issues or what kind of trauma dramas? So there's a frequency in that as opposed to, oh, holding the frequency of love and light. Now, no matter what happens, I will be able to face that because I'm holding the frequency of gratitude for my life, for my well-being, for my health, for, for all humans, for all beings on the planet. And something is much more, you know, much more expansive the emotion is more of a frequency of love rather than a negative. And that is opening our heart that is echoing out into the world. And we are affecting change and, and also touching others at that core core level of their love and light. So you can't go wrong with the intention of having gratitude and really opening the heart and really feeling that and then bringing that into your world, you'll also be bringing it into other people's world as well, helping to activate the true essence of others. Thank you so much, Bonnie. I really am grateful for you and all the work you do. And your mm -hmm. work has really changed my life and filled up so many holes in my understanding of things. So um, mm -hmm. I just want to express that. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, truthfully, Cynthia, I've even written you and told you I am so grateful for you. I really am. You. I mean, you, you having you on the team, it's just been the greatest ever. Truly. I love it. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you can find all of Bonnie's work at spiritualacceleration.com. Please follow us on social media. We're on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Apple, Spotify, all the podcast platforms. You can find Consciousness Unleashed. And Spiritual Acceleration is the name of Bonnie's business. So definitely um, check us out. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.